the next concept, which is factor differentiation. Now, as I said, if you are going to take the usual time difference of a log price, you will guarantee to make it into a stationary size uh, series because that's a return series. Return is guaranteed to be stationary. And what does the ordinary time difference mean? Uh, we can introduce a uh, backshift operator to make it uh, more precise. A backshift operator, when it acts on um, on y, it merely makes it into y as a t minus one, right? A b acting on y of t um, makes it into y t minus one. Okay, so let me actually use a pointer, right? B acting on Y makes it into Y T minus 1. So uh, this expression, 1 minus B acting on Y, creates the, uh, the time difference. And if Y is the law operator, that's guaranteed to be stationary. That's the law return. But you can also consider uh, 1 minus b squared. This operator 1 minus b, you can square it. Uh, that is mathematically equal to y t, at t minus 2 times y of t minus 1 plus t minus 2. So, okay, so you can consider that as some kind of uh, acceleration. Right, the acceleration of uh, log price. In other words, it is the rate of change of log return. So w when you take the second difference, that's the rate of change of the original quantity uh, of, the, of the, 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 the rate of change of the rate of change of the original quantity and so on. So you can take it to the d power uh, that is the rate of change of the rate of change of the rate of change and the rate of change and so on. You know, keep keep, keep uh, piling on rate of change on the previously computed rate of change. Now you can expand this uh, you know, if D is the integer, uh, you know, which is uh, in our case one uh, uh, or two or three, uh, you can create a binomial expansion, right? You you just expand this into this expression, right? And that's called binomial binomial series expansion. But interestingly, D doesn't have to be an integer. This series can be defined even if D is a fraction. So D doesn't have to be one or two or three. D can be 0.5 can be 0.6 and this series can still be defined. Now why would you want the D to be 0.1 or 0.5 or 0.6 instead of an integer? Well that's the whole point of uh, fractional differentiation. In the ordinary return uh, we want to have D equals 1. Right? If D equals 1 it gives us the ordinary log return. But we want to have a D that is between 0 and 1. Yeah, okay, if D is 0, then you are not taking any difference. If D is 0, this binomial expression gives you just 1. So you are not doing anything to the original price series or log price series. But if D is between 0 and 1, that's what we get. What we get is fractional differentiation. It's not as bad as using the original price series because that's non-stationary and it's not as bad as taking D equals 1 which is going to give us the log return series completely erasing the level, price level information. That technical end of the slough. So, that's what we want to use. A D between 0 and 1 for fractional differentiation. And the exact definition is given by this binomial kind of thing. You can plug in D equals 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 and uh, apply that to your original Y log price and that the result is the fractionally differentiated price series. Now, that all sounds good, but what D should we use? Right? I mean, I said D should be between 0 and 1, but which one, what number should we use? Well, we should use as small a d as possible. So, as long as the resulting fractionally differentiated price series is stationary. So that gives us a way to find a minimum d allowed. Because you can keep trying a smaller d until at one point the resulting series is no longer stationary, then that doesn't work. 
So the minimum D available that can still make the fractionally differentiated pi series stationary is the D we should use. So that's where we find the minimum D. Okay. 